My name is Alfred Garfel. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at the Abramson Cancer Center and the University of Pennsylvania. I was pleased to present at ASH uh, last week uh, on behalf of uh, my many co-investigators, updated results of our phase one study of teclistimab, which is a bispecific antibody that targets B cell maturation antigen being evaluated in patients with relapse refractory multiple myeloma. So bispecific antibodies, uh, activate T cells uh, against multiple myeloma cells. Uh, these are antibodies that have two specificities. One is for the T cell and the other is for the myeloma cell. When, so when you administer these antibodies to patients, they bring the T cells to the multiple myeloma cells and force the T cell to recognize the multiple myeloma cell. And, and you get the kind of activation of T cells against the multiple myeloma that you can, that's similar to what you get with uh, CAR T cells, which are of course, a very exciting immunotherapy for multiple myeloma uh, that, that many groups and companies have been developing over the last couple of years, and we hope to see uh, FDA approved in the coming year. Uh, so bispecific antibodies uh, offer a way to get that same kind of T-cell activation in the form of a drug. And so teclistimab in our study was initially given as an intravenous infusion, but with time uh, was evaluated as a subcutaneous injection, which is a quite a convenient way to receive such a potent immunotherapy for patients. Um, and so this study eva has evaluated uh, many dose levels, uh, starting at very low doses and uh, increasing over the course of a couple of years to the point now where we have uh, found a dose of teclistimab uh, that we think is quite effective and safe for patients. And so uh, what we presented at the meeting were results from 149 total patients who have received teclistimab uh, with relapsed refractory myeloma. And these patients uh, had received five or six prior lines of therapy. Um, they had mostly, uh, almost all of them had been exposed to all the major uh, drug classes for multiple myeloma. Uh, over 80% uh, of them had, had developed resistance to proteasome inhibitors like Velcade and carfilzomib, uh, to uh, immunomodulatory drugs like Revlimid and pomalidomide. So these are patients who were running out of options for the treatment of their myeloma. Um, and uh, the patients on this study, uh, if you look at the patients who were treated at the, at the higher dose levels between intravenous dosing and subcutaneous dosing, uh, that was uh, about um, uh, 60 or so patients, uh, those, about 70% of those patients had a response, uh, meaning at least a 50% reduction in their disease burden. And if you look at the patients who were treated at what we've determined as the recommended phase two dose or the, phase, or the dose that we really think is gonna go forward and, and hopefully in the end be FDA approved, um, uh, about 73% of those patients had a response and 55% of them had at least a very good partial response, meaning a 90% reduction in their disease burden. The side effects that we saw with teclistimab were largely what we expected. And so we expect this type of potent immunotherapy like CAR T cells to cause cytokine release syndrome, which is an inflammatory reaction with high fevers um, and the potential, potential to evolve into more serious manifestations like low blood pressure, respiratory difficulty, even requiring ICU care. Um, and we know from CAR T cells, uh, from, from various CAR T cell studies in a range of diseases that cytokine release syndrome can be quite serious and potentially fatal. Um, however, what we saw in this study is that uh, while most patients developed some cytokine release syndrome, it was all low grade. Uh, so uh, we didn't see any grade three or four cytokine release syndrome. So what that means is that when patients develop cytokine release syndrome, it was mostly manageable, did not progress to serious uh, critical illness or, or long lasting complications that uh, this was manageable with some interventions that we know work for cytokine release syndrome and supportive care. And most importantly, it was transient. The cytokine release syndrome eventually resolved and as patients went on to continue receiving the drug after having cytokine release syndrome, they, um, they uh, did not have very much cumulative toxicity. 
In fact, in my experience giving this drug to patients for many months on the trial, uh, the quality of life was quite good, especially the patients who were just getting the subcutaneous dosing, uh, come in for an injection, you know, leave after a short visit. Uh, and, and we even were able to decrease the frequency of dosing in many patients out to every two weeks, uh, which was also a very good experience for patients. Um, another, side of kind of, another, another side effect we worry about with this type of therapy is neurologic toxicity. And that's based on the experience in CAR T cells where we know these potent immunotherapies can occasionally cause um, neurologic problems. Anything from mild tremors or, or brief periods of confusion to more serious and potentially fatal swelling of the brain. Um, we, uh, well, we did see one instance in this study of, uh, of, a, of what we call a grade four delirium, a patient who became rather agitated and delirious. And we think that that was a neurologic toxicity of the drug. Uh, that was the only patient who developed um, uh, that, sorry, that was one of just two patients who developed high-grade neurologic toxicity. Importantly, as we switch to the subcutaneous dosing, which allows a more gradual absorption of the drug, uh, we haven't seen any high-grade neurologic toxicity and saw just one patient with a low-grade event, just a mild tremor. And so it's, it's possible that as, with the subcutaneous dosing of the drug, uh, we won't see any high-grade uh, neurologic toxicities, although we'll have to wait and see as we study more patients to find out if that's the case. Um, so overall, teclistimab was a very well-tolerated drug uh, with high response rates. Uh, toxicities can be serious, but they prove manageable on the study. Importantly, patients receive, before they receive their first full dose of teclistimab on the study, they receive two lower doses. And we think that's been successful in, in, in reducing the risk of high-grade toxicity. And um, that's a strategy that we're continuing to test in the phase two study. And, and, and I think most importantly for myeloma patients, the responses to teclistimab have been durable. And so if you look at the patients who were treated at those most active uh, doses, uh, 44 of the 47 patients who responded, or 94% of those responders, remain on treatment after a median of 6.5 months. And so time will tell just how durable those responses are, but this is very impressive durability uh, in uh, considering that these patients had progress through most other myeloma therapies. And among those patients treated at the recommended phase two dose so far, that's just 16 patients who have responded, uh, 15 of those remain in good responses and doing well. Um, and so uh, time will tell, and, and this is, these all should still be regarded as preliminary results since this is uh, just uh, a phase one and early phase two study. Uh, with more time, we'll understand uh, hopefully confirm a high response rate and long durability uh, of response, but that will take some time to demonstrate that. Um, but these are very promising initial results. Uh, and, and if the phase two and subsequent studies confirm, uh, I think this will prove to be a very promising uh, treatment uh, uh, that will help a lot of multiple myeloma patients.